I want to look at something called a partition, which is something that you should be very familiar with because you probably do it all the time. Here's an example. Suppose you have a deck of cards and maybe you sort it into four different suits, spades, diamonds, hearts, and clubs. Well, what you're doing is you're taking a set, that's the set of cards, and you're partitioning the set into a bunch of different subsets. And we have names for these different subsets. If we look at one individual subset, we call that thing a cell. So in this case, this collection of cards here, this uh, set of hearts, is one cell in the partition. And so this, of course, would be a cell, and this would be another cell, and this would be another cell. And so we've taken the set of cards, and we've partitioned it into four different cells. Another example, suppose you have a set of delicious candies. You could, if you wanted to, sort the delicious candies by color. So we've partitioned the set of candies here, and we would have, in this case, five different cells. Each of these is a cell. And you might see uh, some books refer to each of these as classes as well, but I'm going to use the word cell because class uh, ends up meaning something else later on. So each of these things would be a cell. Okay, so what do we notice here? Well, we see that the union of all the cells is the set S. In other words, here's our set of candies. We could call that the set S. And the union of the cells, that means you just take all the cells together. That would be the same thing as the set of the candies we started with. Another thing we see is that any two cells are disjoint. Look at the, uh, say, the orange candies and the yellow candies. There are no candies, uh, orange candies in the yellow set, and there are no yellow candies in the orange set. In other words, these two cells are separate from each other. There's no overlap here. And that's true of any two cells that you take. They are disjoint. That's what that word means. So let's look at another example. Suppose we have the set S, which has the elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And we can make a partition by saying, well, I'll call one of the cells A1. That would be A, B, C, and D. And we could have another cell, A2, which we could call E, F, G, and H. And notice, that if you take the union of A1 and A2 that you get S and that these two cells are disjoint. Here's another example. Suppose A1 is A, C, and G, A2 is just the element B, and A3 is D, E, F, and H. If we look at this, we see that every element of S is in one of these three cells, and we see that the cells are disjoint. So really, there's two ways that things could go wrong. We could have something like this, so this is not a partition. A1 is A, B, and C. A2 is E, F, G, and H. What's the problem here? Well, there's no D. And remember, if we take the union of the cells, means the take them all together, we should get the set S. In this case, we wouldn't. We'd be missing D. So that's not a partition. Here's another thing that's not a partition. Suppose we have A1 is A, B, and C. A2 is C, D, E, F, G, and H. Well, now if we take the union of A1 and A2, we do indeed get the set S, but we have a problem. The cells are not disjoint. We can see here that this element C shows up in two different cells, A1 and A2. So that's not a partition. All right, I think it's time for the actual definition. If S is a non-empty set, then a partition of S is a collection, and we can call those A sub I, the index I will indicate which cell we're talking about, of non-empty subsets of S such that, and these were the two conditions. So remember we, before we had the two, thing, two ways things could go wrong, so these two conditions kind of take care of that. Condition one says, that the set S is the union of all of the cells. So this big U here means the union, and over the index uh, I here, and so we would add up A1 and A2 and A3 and A4. You take all the cells together, that should give you the set S. And condition two, we have if AI and AJ are two cells, then either, well, they're the same cell, or they're completely disjoint. 
That means you take the intersection of them and you get the empty set. There's no overlap between them. So that kind of makes sense. We know that either they're the same cell or they're completely separate from each other. Okay, let's look at a couple more examples. Here's an example. Suppose the set S is the set of integers and A1, that would be our first cell, is a set of even integers and A2 is the odd integers. And in this case, if uh, we look at the union of A1 and A2, we do indeed get the set of integers. And if we look at A1 and A2, they don't have any overlap at all. They're completely disjoint. So that's a partition. Here's something that's not a partition. Suppose we take the set S, which is the set of integers, and A1 is the set of positive integers, A2 is the set of negative integers. Well, now we have a problem. What's missing? Zero. Zero is neither positive nor negative, so in this case, the reason that this is not a partition would be because condition one is not satisfied, because if you were to take the union of A1 and A2, you would not get S. You get everything but zero. Notice that these two sets are disjoint, so condition two is satisfied, but in order to be a partition, it has to satisfy both conditions one and two.